Hi there, time to take a look at another Mastertronic game and this one's another re-release of a game originally released by Ariola Soft in 1987 and then released by Mastertronic just a year later which probably gives you an idea of how popular it was and the game is called Camelot Warriors so let's take a look at it So here's the front cover and as you can see it's a later release Mastertronic offering with the white logo in a black bar up the left hand side and quite a nice bit of artwork on the cover, Camelot Warriors logo and we've got a knight in his armour fighting a dragon pretty nicely done Camelot Warriors is written on the spine as you'd expect and on the back also as you'd expect are lots of screenshots looks kind of reminiscent of Ghosts and Goblins based on the screenshots and the blurb says you're about to begin a journey of no return which doesn't sound very promising you must cross the gate of mystery, penetrate treacherous worlds and defeat fierce enemies to discover the secret magic mystery. And here are some more detailed instructions. So it tells you about the worlds you're going to travel through. The woods, the lake, the caverns and the castle of Camelot. It tells you once you're in the castle you'll discover the elements as listed there. And you must take each of those elements and present them to the guardian of each world so they can be destroyed. It says that'll not be an easy task and it doesn't sound like it and the help of your soul you might just make it and then it's also mentions the final mystery that which will be found nearly impossible according to that and then we've got the controls loading instructions and some brief foreign language instructions This is the title screen then, and as you can see, it says Camelot Warriors in the middle, in a fairly nondescript font, and it's got some nice animation of some birds flying around. Some reasonable music in the background as well. And uh, this game was programmed by Dynamic, who I believe are a Spanish company, and I think that's given away slightly by the word at the top there, Programado for Opera Soft. So I think they are Spanish and I did quite a few games uh, on the Amstrad I believe. Not sure how many games they actually did for the Commodore 64 but this is one of them. So not a bad title screen but nothing spectacular. Let's get on with the game. Now I did mention that I thought the game looked a bit like Ghosts and Goblins on the screenshots. It does have a similarity with Ghosts and Goblins for sure in that it's bloody ridiculously hard and you do play a knight. As you can see there I lost a life without moving when a bird flew into me so uh, that's one lesson learned. Actually the first time I played the game uh, I pressed fire to start and moved to the right just a little bit and got killed by that little green thing on the floor so there goes another life. Uh, so what you actually need to do is stand completely still and then hack that bird uh, and then jump over the top of this green thing and land on this platform down here. Um, movement is left and right. Pressing up makes you jump forwards. Whether you push up and diagonally or straight up, you always jump forward. Pushing down, if you're thinking I could crouch down and kill some of those little things on the floor. No, pushing down hacks the sword, as does the fire button. So it's uh, it's not really like Ghosts and Goblins. It's not really a run and gun. It's more of an adventure game. It's a your classic flick screen, collect the items and take them to various places kind of thing which was popular in the 80s on the Spectrum and Amstrad in particular. Uh, there is a bit of scrolling as you've just seen on this bit although it's completely pointless. It's just a long platform really. Um, so I'm just going to demonstrate something else I did on the first time I played. Firstly, my little guy here is now stuck by these rocks um, which is just a joke as if you can't step over some little rocks like that. So, but if I jump over here, I'm gonna show you what happens when you respawn on a screen. It basically repeats the last action you did when you respawn. So if I jump from here, back this way, oh, not quite, I'll get there eventually, and land on that plant, which kills me, on my next life, it does exactly the same thing and kills me. And one last time, and it's game over which is absolutely dire. So, that's how not to play the game. Let's now have a go at trying to play the game a little bit better than that. 
So you can see there's a light bulb up there. That's what I've got to collect. So that's my first aim. Avoid the little green blobby thing. Graphics are not too bad. The graphic of the main sprite's pretty decent, but the animation is pretty poor. It looks like just two frames of animation. When he swings the sword, it looks okay. That's not too bad. When he jumps, it's a bit ridiculous. The fact that you can only jump in a big diagonal arc, as you can see, uh, that'll come to cause me more problems in future. And um, yeah, other graphics are very look very much like. They originated on the spectrum, i.e. one colour for the most part and kind of sort of trying to be detailed which doesn't really work on the resolution of the Commodore 64. So they've gone for the spectrum look even though it's not really a suitable machine to do that. Anyway, so I need to go up here. I've got another thing to avoid here walking backwards and forwards. So you've got to time your jump just right. Then jump up this platform here. Done this a few times died a lot of times a couple of things go there there's another rock that I can't get past without jumping pathetic and then another long scrolling bit that's also rather pointless and some things to dispatch which I've managed to do without further peril and you end up back where you started and there's a light bulb or is it a light bulb no, it's actually the unburning fire. So you collect the unburning fire and then you've got to take it back down where you came from. So this is a case of just trying to drop off the platform at the right time so you don't land on anything that's going to kill you. All enemies respawn whenever you go in back into an area. As you'll see in a minute, the little green guy will be coming past me in a moment. So if you kill them and you go off the screen and come back on, then they're back. Uh, sound is pretty crap just some pitter patter of footsteps a kind of a swishing sound for his sword and various other annoying noises like this thing this uh, big sort of venus flytrap kind of thing is uh, just making a weird sort of smashing sound which doesn't sound anything like it would in real life so another avoidance of a little green blobby thing the enemies are quite nicely drawn to be fair very bland game overall however so again inch my way onto this screen to avoid getting killed by something hop my way over there no cock that up got to time your jump just right so that you don't land on the thing as you come back down there you go you take this guy over to here and he got zapped by a wizard he's donated that light bulb thing and got zapped by a wizard and turned into a frog which by the way is another similarity to ghosts and goblins because whether you know this or not, if you shoot a tombstone in the first level for as long as possible, a wizard appears and turns you into a frog. So there you go, a bit of trivia there, which is actually more interesting than this game. So I'm a frog now, and I've got to get past this uh, plant thing and the bird, and the only way to do that is to go back to this screen jump over so you land on the rock otherwise you can't get past it then time you jump again jump over the frog can jump higher than the other characters or the knight character but he can't shoot so next job is to jump into this pond which i shall attempt to do oh i'm on a lily pad in fact there we go so i'm down under the sea now and various things to kill me there in fact the first couple of times i tried this I fell down this bit, this, this enemy here was around about here and it just killed me four times over, which again was very annoying and totally unfair and there's nothing you can do about it. So somehow I've got to time a jump to get past that thing and not land on this thing here. So I'm gonna go for it and I've managed it. And again, whoa, oh, that's not going too badly. So I'm in uncharted territory here. I've never been to this part of the game before. It's quite nicely drawn. Some fish swimming around. No doubt they're lethal to the touch. Several fish there and a the jellyfish. So I'll avoid that for now, I think. Let's head back up this way. I, I fear that when I jump off this side of the screen onto the other side of the screen to get past the, lot, the rocks, 
uh, I'm just going to land on something that's going to kill me over and over again, but I'll give it a go nonetheless. Oh, maybe not. Nope, nothing to pick up there either. Okay, so there's another guy that you've obviously got to give an object to there. But God knows how you find that object. Can't go anywhere from there now. I can't see any objects anywhere. I'm a bit at a loss here now. I can't see any objects anywhere and yet somehow I've got to find one to give to that guy. Let's give it a go. I'm probably going to die and that'll be the end of the review if that's the case because somehow I've got to navigate my way past all three of these things. Which seems to be impossible because the, the fish are going one way, the jellyfish is going the other. Right, I'm going to go for it. Whoa, better than I thought. I don't know what happens now. Brace yourself. Yeah, there goes a life. Uh, so all in all, it's a 199 game. It's not very good. The animation is quite nice. Oh, hang on, I can go back up here somehow, can I? Nope, I can't. Um, I can't quite work out what's happening now. I can't jump off there any further. I can't jump back onto the level above that I was on. I suspect I was supposed to pick something up up there, uh, but I didn't notice anything. I'm not sure I want to play it again. I might have another go, but I'm going to try and get make my way past this lot again first. Which I did last time by... I'm going to try dropping off the edge instead this time. There we go. Progress. Now I've got to avoid this fish, which... Oh no! Still got two lives left. Still got a chance. I'm just going to stand here for the time being, see what these fish do. I'm hoping this one at the bottom turns around before it hits me. It does. So this is all about timing. Oh, I've cocked it up again. Right, he goes all the way, so I can get past him. Because the one at the top only goes halfway. There we go. And same again on this screen. Whoa, jump through the gap. But I've got nothing to give this guy, so I'm stuck now. I've only got one life left, so let's kill me off. Right, one more try at the underwater bit. You don't need to watch all that again, and then I'll sum up what I've found so far in the game. So I'm back at the underwater section, and I think it's pretty obvious I've got to try and get to this platform here. Uh, how I'm going to do that, I'm not entirely sure. But I'm going to give it a go. I figure if you wait till the jellyfish turns around, no that's not going to work, let's jump now, no that's not going to work either. Oh interesting, I wonder if that can help in some way, I don't see how, but I'll give it a go. No definitely not, that's definitely not the way to do it. Nor is that. Stupid rock. Oh, that was close. Just got to get the timing right. Oh no, I've jumped again and cocked it up again. Oh, that's so annoying. So I'm back at this section for one last try with all four lives intact. If I don't get it right this time, and it's all about jumping just the once and not the twice from this position. If I don't get it right this time, I give up. Looking good. Ah, so there's the thing I've got to collect, that television there. This looks challenging. I have got four lives to give it a go with though. Oh, I've done that cool jump between the two fish again. Always a good thing. Whoa, he's close by. That wasn't too tricky. The Mirror of Wisdom. I thought that was a television. What's the betting? It's now almost impossible to get back from this point. It looks bad. 
somehow I've got to get from there past the jellyfish okay the jellyfish stops there so we get past the jellyfish then past the fish oh all so far so good that wasn't too bad I'm getting, I think I'm getting the hang of this until now where I'm going to get every respawn onto this screen jumping me into this goddamn fish that is just so annoying and that's why I'm not playing this game anymore and why I wouldn't pay $1.99 for it it's got some good ideas it's just spoilt by a really stupid respawn mechanic and obviously usual respawning enemies and just things that are almost impossible to avoid so nice ideas uh, pretty bad execution and not worth playing and frustrating myself with again If you only knew the power of the dark side. Two. One. Zero.